Hello, my name is Donna Williams and I'm doing this video for the Autistic Voices Project. Um, when I think about autism and positivity, it's a bit of a challenge for me because everyone's autism, I guess, is, is from a different space. Um, recently, they've uh, been talking, you know, about studies to do with children with big brains and other ones who have um, immune disorders and I'm in the immune disorder group. Um, I've had immune disorders since I was at least five months old and these are part of autoimmune problems for me, gut disorders, detox problems <laughs> and ultimately um, just come out of dealing with breast cancer. So hard to look at the positives of that. Did that stuff affect my development, <laughs> my information processing? Well, it's hard not to when you're dealing with significant health problems that really impact on how you digest your food, how you detox, <laughs> how, you know, the nutrition to your brain, the whole deal. So yeah, it affected my development. It probably had some relationship to things like my meaning deafness, meaning blindness, um, it certainly made me really dissociated from my body, which I was constantly dealing with recurrent infections. Um, being meaning deaf made me cut off from the world of language until late childhood. I uh, was um, quite echolalic and I developed functional speech in late childhood. Um, I'm face blind. <laughs> so I live in a world in which everyone's a friend or everyone's a stranger depending on my day um, it makes it difficult to recognize people <laughs> and and therefore you know how do you build any friendship you can't recognize people um, I tend to get along well with shopkeepers because at least I know where to find them um, I had visual perceptual fragmentation, which meant that I'd see the eyebrow, lose the eye, get the teeth, lost the mouth, get the head, lost the body, get the hand, lost the arm, not to mention the room appearing to be a bit. So I never learned to think in pictures because I never saw anything as a whole thing. I never saw two things interacting because I commonly didn't even see a whole, you know, dog or cat. I saw a tail and a head and some fur and yeah. Anyway, so I can't talk about the excitement of thinking in pictures or any other deal, but I can say that with all of the issues that I dealt with and their impact on my development, my communication, extreme behavioral stuff, and I was extremely, um, I had exposure anxiety, very afraid of um, anyone initiating things with me. Um, would provoke me into avoidance, diversion, retaliation, responses that I wasn't in control of. And then I really hated basically being this emotional craziness that I couldn't control. I also would want to do things and it would sabotage me. So I want to initiate and then the exposure anxiety would protect me from my own initiations and push me into avoidance of what I wanted to do or diversions from it or retaliation against it and I felt really trapped inside but I want to talk about that that actually made me really spiritual it made me have a really strong inner world it it gave me faith that I was still in there um, it's interesting that when you get trapped with something and you can't express it uh, somehow you have to find a kind of grace in living with it uh, you you come to I guess befriend the enemies <laughs> befriend the internal enemies and with the health issues and information processing chaos with the agnosias I I learned to be really creative and absolutely make the best of them I learned how to navigate the world according to the sensory perceptual disorders I had and that has made me a, a real individual because the world around me is not meaning deaf. It's not meaning blind. It's not face blind. It doesn't see the world in bits. It didn't have to learn to navigate uh, as a functioning person with those kind of deficits. And I did. I learned to speak even though I couldn't understand my own language. I learned to communicate even though I couldn't process people talking to me. I learned to... 
meet people and look at people even though I'm face blind and they all look like strangers even when they're familiar until they start talking or moving and I can recognize them unless they're wearing like their standard clothes or something I can recognize them by. I learned to get the excitement and buzz out of a visually fragmented world and how to use things like peripheral vision and tinted lenses to try to glue together uh, the processing of um, of visual information. I learned to use gestural signing to keep up with the meaning in my own speech <laughs> and to process the meaning of other people's. I learned to think in gesture and movement because I can't think in pictures. I learned to uh, do all my thinking outside of me through mind maps and objects because I can't internally mentalize and juggle thought. And I'm really proud of all that. I'm proud of all my adaptations. I'm proud of my creativity. I'm proud of how I've overcome, I guess, a uh, really significant disability and a uh, really challenged development. <laughs> and I'm proud of that in the same way I'm proud of overcoming recently breast cancer and you know hopefully it'll stay away <laughs> um as for autism i think you know i've overcome so much and there's obviously you know are you still autistic because people think that if i now have functional speech and i am you know married i'm happy i have friends therefore i'm not autistic i still have my agnosias i still have the gut immune metabolic disorders but they're relatively managed when they're not giving me cancer um <laughs> or allergies um i still have a small degree of the exposure anxiety i really began to come through that significantly in my 30s um i don't have uh i still have some of the uh i still have a lot of dissociation from the body it's really easy for me to dissociate from the body to lose uh, the cohesion of whatever task i was on to completely forget the cooking <laughs> forget what time it is what day it is that's normal uh, in my world um, it's normal for me to uh, to really struggle with facing feelings when they're really extreme and challenging because I was so good at, at detaching from them putting them on hold go my own world come back out drip feed deal with it slowly get away, do some more. <laughs> so I'm, I guess, sometimes I guess I could say that's good emotional management. Uh, certainly it did me well during cancer because I could put my emotions on drip feed in a way. I think that, and I attribute some of that to being autistic. I certainly really dealt with cancer very differently, I think, to a lot of non-autistic people. Uh, my I had enormous positivity. Um, I had total adaptation. I had a great creativity about going through cancer and chemo and mastectomy and everything, which, and a level of, in a sense, kind of detachment and naivety and straightforwardness that I think was really surprising for my surgeon, my oncologist. Uh, and it, it kind of sets me a world apart because there's not many autistic people in the cancer ward. But at the same time, I'm really glad that I, uh, that I had, in a sense, autism on my side or that history of containment and having to solve my own issues and to be my own parent. Uh, because in my uh, experiences of autism, this won't be everyone's. Uh, I was I was very autonomous. <laughs> I was the whole world. I was the whole family. Um, no, I didn't feel other people understood what I was going through, and I couldn't communicate, and I couldn't cope with their communication, which didn't mean anything. Uh, I couldn't even see them as a whole. So it was very challenging to. Uh, yeah, I was just with my own family, and it's done me really well. I also feel that being someone who was 90% meaning deaf until late childhood and who couldn't visually process anything as a whole, this made me an artist. It really tuned me into music and 
um, nature and colors and contrasts and textures um, I'm a real hands person these are my eyes these are my ears <laughs> um, they and it's helped me in being a sculptor in being a visual artist in being a musician and um, I feel that these are then they're my non-verbal language and my other language was from nine I began typing uh, using first uh, letter strings then word lists and then by 11 to 13 I was typing poetry and so this was my first uh, functional communication the use of language with meaning and my verbal language mirrored my typing progress so this for me is the foundations of the author that I became I am and the researcher the person who can love written words even though I have difficulty with language processing of written and verbal words but the ability to actually use them to communicate is something that I have championed uh, in the autism world and strongly support and have had the honor of seeing so many wonderful functionally non-verbal beautiful writers I could start reeling off the names uh, but uh, I'd, I'd be afraid of who I'd leave out but there's some some just wonderful writers and their depth their humanity their passion um, their support of others who have had entrapment with involuntary behaviors who have had um, really significant uh, challenges sometimes abuse because they were nonverbal people with a whole lot of involuntary behaviors these people are warriors and uh, I very strongly feel very strongly supportive of of their expression in their journeys with autism um, I feel often there's a lot of talk about oh my autism is gorgeous my autism is fabulous you know whatever <laughs> I have my personality it's a fairly autistic personality I think it's okay but there's a whole lot of other autism stuff that for me has been about immune deficiency and brain injury and various you know delayed development and uh, extreme entrapment with involuntary uh, responses and um, yeah but I have to still say there's there's been positives out of that for me as a soul <laughs> so and I think we often forget that um, we're so busy looking at the negatives and I think that uh, that even when we're looking at at autism it's really important to distinguish that from your personality because you might have a very autistic kind of personality but if that's all that your autism is well good luck to you but there's also other people uh, that other stuff is really making them autistic as well as their personality and then there's autistic people with quite a, a non-autistic personality like we don't generally think of like really narcissistic stuff necessarily as being an autistic stuff but there's people with that and I think that we can't, we shouldn't confuse, uh, we shouldn't confuse that. And it's really important to celebrate your personhood, uh, good, bad, or ugly, as as much as you can find the positives in your autism without confusing the two. So autism is uh, part of the the weave, the fabric of my life, my history, and part of what has. Um, interacted with me and helped shape the personhood that is Donna <laughs> but my personality and my, my the broader life experience has shaped me too you know my cancer is not my autism it shaped me um, coming from a background of abuse and parents with serious uh, comorbid stuff themselves if not spectrum stuff themselves dealing with homelessness uh, coming through uh, abuse uh, those are not necessarily autism stuff but those have shaped me too being a happy-go-lucky really silly person um, uh, that's really shaped me that's not necessarily because of my autism and so I think that what autism has given me as well is an ability to actually tell the difference between 
um, condition and personhood and how they interact and that they're not completely each other at all that personhood can shine through autism and personhood can be shaped by autism uh, for the better for the worse <laughs> sometimes combinations of both and that I guess the whole person is you know the sum total of that that little dance uh, between personhood and condition so um, I'm not going to glorify autism in any one size fits all way because I've worked as an autism consultant since 1996 I've worked with over a thousand people with autism and they're so different so many different fruit salads so many different personalities so many different families and influences you know, some families who excuse them from everything and carry them and, and promote learned helplessness. Some families who are really good with boundaries and really motivating and uh, insist on this person's inclusion and autonomy. Uh, some personalities who will pick that up and run with it and some who will give you hell and make sure that they can completely self-indulge along the way. So, you know, I've just seen people with um, really severe kind of health issues and genetic issues and I've seen people who don't have some of that stuff who were just as autistic. You know, I've seen people with comorbids and people without, people with brain injury and people without. So I've seen a lot of stuff uh, as an autism consultant and too much to say that there's any one size fits all thing about the positivity of autism what i can say is there's probably something positive about anybody's autism even people who are um, very severely challenged uh, by the the issues that that come together as their autism there's always something fabulous fabulous about uh, about their personhood and the way that that interacts perhaps even sometimes if it if their autism overwhelms that personhood sometimes that just makes makes their personhood all the more valuable uh, within them and if they do find a way to come to express it um, sometimes that's that's just amazing what what those people have to communicate uh, when they they hopefully finally are able to do that um, uh, even if that's you know through tight communication which today I hope we celebrate as equal communication so enough of my lecture self that's it um, hope you found the the positivity useful uh, I suppose the autism world is full of critics I suppose they'll want to throw a few tomatoes at me what the hell I've got a, I've got stalkers I got critics I got conspiracy theorists I got people who want to call me every type of crazy I got people who feel she was never autistic and that's great then just go to my website which is donnawilliams.net and read my diagnosis page read the whole damn thing take a look at my photos and then go and sit happily in a corner with a cup of tea and make your own mind up once you're actually informed okay bye bye